an incredible new prediction came out for Dogecoin today from one of the smartest investors out there. So, let's take a look at it. Hello guys and welcome back to Crypto Fire, where we talk about Dogecoin, cryptocurrency, and investing. Before we talk about Dogecoin, let's look at how the entire market is doing. Right now crypto has a market worth of around $2.3 trillion and we're seeing Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, XRP, Doge and Solana have been quite flat over the previous couple of days. But I'm still optimistic, looking at the Plan B stock to flow model. Plan B has successfully forecasted where Bitcoin would close over the previous two months, and right now, he's talking about 63,000 on 31st October. And then he's also saying that we'll go parabolic in November and December, that we'll set new all-time highs in December, surpassing 100k. I told you to brace yourself for September being a red month in Bitcoin and crypto rising in October, and this is exactly what we're seeing now. Now, the big news is that David Gokstein had some really interesting things to say about Dogecoin. He began by saying that, I firmly believe Dogecoin will go to a dollar. You have Vitalik, who's on Dogecoin's foundation now. If Ethereum helps out with building or correcting something within Dogecoin's ecosystem, there's no limit. It just doesn't stay at a dollar, it goes further. And then he also said that Dogecoin can rise 12 a full to hit $3, but only if it gains more real-world utility. So, right now, other altcoins like ETH and Cardano have more promising use cases, powered by automated smart contracts that people say can execute a wide variety of tasks, which include things like protecting medical data and limiting fraudulent insurance claims. So, the bottom line is that Dogecoin can reach its potential if it follows suit. And we know that Dogecoin's use cases will increase eventually because of its bridge with Ethereum. So, $3 for Dogecoin is looking inevitable at this point. But since the bridge isn't here, it might take longer than expected and it'll test a lot of people's patience before it gets to $3. Also, if you want these time-sensitive updates quicker than others, just subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications. The quicker we're able to spread the right info for Dogecoin, the quicker Dogecoin will get on the top. Now, another thing that I want to talk about is the new moves from institutional investors. They are also doubling down on Bitcoin, as the most recent JP Morgan analyst report stated that there has been a significant surge in demand from institutional investors. They were claiming that it had a lot to do with institutional investors wanting to hedge against inflation, and this is also extremely different from what we saw earlier in May, when we saw JP Morgan issued a study stating that investors were shifting away from Bitcoin and toward gold. As you can see, now they're stating that the exact reverse is occurring, with investors shifting away from traditional gold and toward Bitcoin. They stated that they did so for a variety of reasons. The first is that there have been several recent guarantees from US legislators that Bitcoin would not be banned. We all know that the United States will not ban Bitcoin. They already have it in a lot of legislation that produces tax money, so they're not going to ban crypto anytime soon. The second factor they mentioned was the recent growth of the Lightning Network and second-layer payment solutions, which have all been believed to be aided by El Salvador's adoption of Bitcoin. So, once again, this simply shows that broad acceptance of Bitcoin is making large money players more comfortable with putting their money in Bitcoin. Now, one of the other things we're seeing with this study is that it's not just institutional investors. There are smaller whales like Kevin O'Leary who came out earlier this week and stated that he has more Bitcoin than gold, and we're hearing a lot of others say the same thing. So it's quite fascinating that all of these people, who were originally either against Bitcoin and were going into gold, are suddenly altering their entire approach by putting more money into Bitcoin and less money into gold they're finally understanding the value and use cases of crypto. Another implication is that we are also currently witnessing that the stock market is trading sideways. There are people who are scared, and these people are fleeing gold to purchase more crypto. In periods of inflation, people would purchase silver and gold as a hedge against inflation, since inflation means your dollar's value is depreciating because the government continues to issue money, thus devaluing your currency. Now there can't be any more gold or silver out there that hasn't already been created, therefore it can't be inflated. So, in a sense, it is deflationary. And instead of going to gold, which has a negative yield on investment at the moment, people are stockpiling cryptos. These institutions own gold worth trillions of dollars.
I believe gold has a market cap of $11 trillion. So, if people begin to abandon gold in favor of Bitcoin, its value will rapidly increase. The value of gold will eventually fall, thus bringing in even more new players in the crypto market. And another I want to talk about is how the government is slowly getting into crypto. Cynthia Lummies has long been a Bitcoin enthusiast, but she just recently revealed that she has purchased up to $100,000 worth of Bitcoin. In a story published on October 7, 2021, she stated that she had acquired between 50k and 100k in Bitcoin. The interesting thing here was that she filed outside of the period that she was required to. So there is a 4-5 to five day reporting deadline imposed by the Stop Trading and Congressional Knowledge Act primarily to ensure that politicians follow all of these regulations and there are no unlawful actions. We all know that things like these happen, but this legislation is in place to prevent it. And according to Cynthia Lummies, she did not report within the 4-5 to five day limit. She bought it in August, and the most intriguing part about it is that she bought it only two weeks after she and two other senators attempted to put an amendment into the infrastructure bill to limit the manner in which this bill defined the term brokers. This demonstrates that institutional investors, whales, and government officials are still buying. And this also demonstrates that they're trying to spread some FUD in the market to accumulate at lower prices. We are also finding that long-term investors are holding more than they were at the start of the year they're not selling. Instead, they're accumulating more and more. The final point is that if politicians were to acquire cryptocurrency for themselves, they would not do so if there were any rumors or discussions in Congress about Bitcoin being banned. And this is why I'm not too worried about the next news item. So, it says here that the US government may expand its efforts to study and regulate crypto. The Biden administration is considering an executive order for federal agencies, which would require them to study the crypto industry and provide recommendations on their oversight. According to the Bloomberg report, the order would include the Treasury Department, Commerce Department, National Science Foundation, and national security agencies. In addition to asking agencies to study different aspects of the industry, the order would clarify the responsibilities different agencies have around crypto and blockchain. So, while it might be something that could induce FUD in the market, I still think they won't ban it because of everything that I just talked about. Now, another news came from Vitalik Buterin. He's calling the mandatory use of Bitcoin in El Salvador totally opposite to crypto's ideals of freedom. He's suggesting that we should be able to buy anything we want with whatever money we choose. We shouldn't have governments telling us that you have to use the American dollar or you have to do the pesos or Bitcoin. You should be able to walk into a store and use Bitcoin, Dogecoin, or Fiat to purchase your goods. But he's also forgetting that crypto being legal tender has many advantages too. People at El Salvador don't have to pay those enormous amounts of fees to Western Union for international payments anymore. Also, I think this move from El Salvador is just the beginning. If some other countries make it mandatory to accept payments in crypto, we're looking at at least a million dollars per Bitcoin because there's simply so much money out there that isn't in cryptocurrencies. We'll multiply by 10x to 100x if we receive even a tiny proportion of it. Now, if we get all of the businesses in the world that have the capacity to utilize cryptocurrency as a method of payment, there would be millions of new millionaires in the world. At this point, this is obviously a prediction, but I think it's possible because just two months after El Salvador's announcement, we heard similar plans from Brazil and Tonga. And then the CEO of Bitnex said that at least five countries will accept Bitcoin as legal tender after El Salvador. He also said that he expects all of them to be developing countries. This is because according to the World Bank, low- and middle-income countries received around $540 billion in remittances in 2020, and this is nearly 75% of total global remittances. The IMF predicts that developing countries will experience over double the inflation rates that developed economies will take this year. Now, let's come back to Dogecoin analysis. It's currently trading around 25 cents and is still above the 100-day moving average. As I said in the previous video, Doge needs to go above the 200-day simple moving average, which currently stands at 27.5 cents, if it wants to quickly break above the 32 cents mark. My prediction is that it'll get there some time by the end of this week. Still, I'd love to know where you think we're headed from here. So let me know in the comments section below.
And this is it for today's video. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and sharing it with your friends. Also, please subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications for daily videos on Dogecoin and cryptocurrency. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Goodbye. Take care.